Hanoi is a city on the move, and the street food is a major part of Vietnam's culture. It's very important for the local economy, poorer families can eat cheaply, produce markets thrive, and tourists love the experience. For Vietnamese, it's more than just a convenient way of eating. It's a lifestyle, which I feel is the envy of many Western societies. Pho is a dish that's loved and adored by all the Vietnamese people. It's become part of our culture. It's something that we're all really passionate about. Now, pho takes time. It takes around eight to 10 hours to simmer. Stayed up all night, no one else is awake. And Mrs. Hien's family here have been lovely enough to share their family recipe with me now. When you're cooking pho, it takes a lot of patience. It's probably one of my most loved cooked dish because there's so many ingredients and you need to look after it and you need to just really watch over it for hours and hours on end. And the end result is just incredible. Now, recipes change from region to region. The southern recipe, I would have had maybe around 12 or 15 different spices here. But in Hanoi, the pho recipe is very simple. It's very elegant as well and this is Mrs. Hearing's secret recipe. So we started with some red shallots, char grilled, so they need to be blackened. It releases all its moisture, it's sweeter and we just peel it off. So she's got those going. I'm going to put some young ginger on there as well. Um, okay. in, the, in the south you would grill some um, garlic as well, but she said in the north, we don't want that strong pungent flavour, we want clean flavours, so leave the garlic out. So just ginger and the Asian red shallots. So I'm going to grill that until it's blackened. While she's doing that, I've got a pan and I'm going to dry roast my spices. So here I've got some black pepper, some star anise, some cinnamon and some fennel and also some uh, black cardamom. Now when you're dry roasting anything, remember dry pan, not too high, really, really low heat. Once it heats up, put the spices in. Now, star anise here. Gorgeous little spice. Really strong, aromatic, liquid flavour. Yeah. Tom Tom. Yeah. Make it nice and Kairang. Okay, I got it all wrong. Don't dry roast it, just throw it on the grill. Let's do that. Lay it out. Okay. Vâng. Đương, đương chút xíu thôi. So she's just grill it quickly on the charcoal. Now once you get that, that aroma, take it off straight away. That's right. Okay. Now I'm going to get Miss Hing to grill my black cardamom as well. Này, đương luôn cô ha. Mấy cái? Two's enough. While she's doing that, I can't really put my fennel seeds on this grill, so I'm going to dry roast it as I was going to do before. And just... Keep tossing it until it gets all the aroma out. Okay, now that fennel seed is ready. Put that back in my bowl. Throw in some cinnamon. Now the cinnamon's a bit thicker, so I'm just going to break it up a little bit. And it needs a bit more pan time than the fennel seeds. Now my last ingredient to dry roast is just some black peppercorns. All right, my pepper's done. Looks like the, the ginger and the shallots are done. She peels all the, the blackened parts off. And we throw that into our pot. Now, I'm ready for everything to go in the pot now. Now, Mrs. Hien has peeled and sliced all of the ginger and the shallots ready to go. I've pounded all of my spices and tied it into a muslin cloth, just like that. Now. What I need to do is get my big pot of water. Now the water's come out of the well just down there, onto the, onto the burner. 
Now, I'm ready to put all my ingredients in, ready to boil. I'm going to start with my beef bone to throw those in there. And make sure you're starting with cold water, not hot water. You can also use oxtail if you like. And there's a few varieties of fur that use chicken as well, but I'll just use beef bones for this one. A kilo of beef brisket as well, which is the underbelly of the beef, the cow. Throw that in. Grilled ginger, red shallots. Throw that all in there. Crystallised rock sugar, some salt, some fish sauce, a little spice pouch, and bring that to the boil. I'm going to put the lid on, really low heat. I'm going to have a sleep and come back in eight hours. Come on, go ahead. After two hours of simmering, the brisket is taken out and Mrs Hin then skims off all the impurities, which is really important for a clear, clean broth. About 5am, all the ingredients for the pho dishes are prepared. The brisket is finely sliced and now everything is ready for the morning breakfast rush. Now don't expect a late breakfast, Mrs Hin's dishes are all sold by 10am. Beef bones are the base for the broth. Pho can be served with tripe, tendons and also beef balls. There is however another popular version of pho found throughout Vietnam served with chicken. Rice noodles are essential in all the dishes. They are simply blanched in hot water for just a couple of seconds. It's been eight hours. The broth is ready. I can smell the aroma through this whole street of Lee Kwok Su. Miss Hien has set up her stall here. I can't wait to get into it. Ah, come on, you. Wow, the broth is so clear. First thing you do is Try the broth, that's the most important part of the dish. Mm. This is comfort food for me. I can eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Now there's Miss Hin's beef broth with rice noodles. Pho bò, tai nam. I really enjoy walking down the streets of Hanoi and stopping these ladies who cart their bicycle down the road waiting for students or just local people to come out. Here she's selling fermented pork, a bit battered and deep fried, and we've got lime gelato as well. And on her little basket, she's got green mango, which she serves with salt and chili. Now, one of these cups, you can have a new way, 2,000 dong, so that's like 10 cents. What a treat. Come on. Wow. Mm. It's actually really, really good and quite refreshing. Delicious. It was time to leave the main city and check out some little cottage industries making wonderful ingredients. My first stop was Lang Vong, seven kilometers away. For centuries, they have been making this flat green rice. The young rice is first washed to remove the husk, then dried in these large concrete bowls and removed at precisely the right time, just before it burns. While the rice is still hot, it's put in this giant wooden mortar and pestle, pounded flat, which takes about 20 minutes. Now, I was really surprised she still had all her fingers. One of my favourite dishes is flash-fried prawns with pork belly paste. I used the rice as a coating, and the result was fantastic. 
the flat rice gave the dish a real crispy, crunchy texture. 